So let's go ahead and get straight into this right now. I'm going to be using the Pro Football Network's Mock Draft Simulator because they're honestly the best one. I hate the way PFF grades. It's real random. You can really work the system real, real hard. I think the Pro Draft database is a pretty decent one as well, but I get the best and most consistent results, and I think the more realistic result using Pro Football Network as a draft simulator. So let's go ahead and get through this. My mock draft, full seven rounds, what the Panthers should do, the perfect Carolina Panthers mock draft. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. Seven rounds, of course, fast. And you pick them boys in blue out of the NFC South. You got to do that. You got to you gotta remember that one. Let's draft. Right off the bat, some very interesting things happen. I'm going to ignore the trade for right now. Now, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, and Trey Lance are all off the board. Not a surprise there at all. Kyle Pitts to the Falcons? kind of a surprise, honestly. They could go in a lot of different ways. They have a lot of different things they could do in this draft. But overall, I mean, a little bit surprising, but I can see them taking Kyle Pitts here. Uh, Panay Sewell going to the Bengals, not a surprise. Two weapons to the Dolphins and then the Lions. Makes sense. Kind of surprising that the Dolphins don't go for protection because they have a worse O-line than the Bengals and they have an injury-prone quarterback. But we've only heard weapon, weapon, weapon about the Dolphins. But I wouldn't be surprised if they went for a, a, uh, a lineman here. Now, look, we see on the board we have Justin Fields, Rashawn Slater, Pat Sertan. All three of these dudes, and we'll, we'll even include J.C. Horn on the list as well, who are all available right now. I'm telling you right now, I don't like the idea of drafting a quarterback this year. One, because we just got Sam Darnold. Two, because we really can't support a quarterback right now with our O-line. And three, because, I mean, we've already proven and, and made it very clear. Every single fan of the NFL has made it very clear that they don't care if, if guys are one-year wonders. They don't care if guys are one-year wonders who play at the top of the game at, like, Bama. They don't care if guys are one-year wonders who play at North Dakota State two years ago. So I think that we can find a quarterback in the draft. This isn't the last year to find a quarterback like Justin Fields, right? We, it's not the last year to find a quarterback. See what you have in Sam Darnold. Build around him for right now. And if you, if you build around Sam Darnold and it doesn't work out, then you can still have a good team to bring in a quarterback. This isn't the last year to get a quarterback. You're not desperate in desperate need as in like this is the last season you could ever draft a quarterback. I'm fine with waiting at least one more year. Plus, there's going to be some trade offers. So, with these trade offers, I'm not going to put too much stock into future picks because this is a one-year mock draft. So, this this uh, offer from the, the Patriots, they offered me their first, I believe this is their second, and then a second next year for my first and third this might be... No, actually, this is, this is a bad deal. Actually, they don't want to give me a first at all. This and They want me to give them a third. This is actually a really bad deal. This is a horrible deal. Now, moving down six spots to the Chargers for their first and second round pick, I would not I would, I would not hate that at all. And then the, 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 the Packers want to give me one, two, and three, and a second and a third. To move down to 29. Uh, that's too far for me, honestly. That's like if you're trying to just go ahead and sacrifice this whole year. You want to just sack the year and, and, and get things moving for next year. I can't do that. But right here, I don't feel bad about going down, what, five spots to the Chargers. And I get the second round pick. I get two second round picks. This probably won't be the best deal available on draft night. But I'm going to go ahead and take this deal right here because I think that we can still get some very good players. I already have one in mind, honestly. But this will not be the best deal in place uh, tonight if Justin Fields is still on the board. Uh, but I would, I would take this deal though. I go ahead and, and I draft. I, I take this, uh, this, this trade, and I feel good about it. Not the most realistic, but I still would trade down to the Chargers at number eight. Here, I'm not looking at any trades anymore. Fields to the Broncos. The Chargers traded up for a Sean Slater. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, then you have uh, Devontae Smith to the, to the Giants and then Patrick Sertan to the Cowboys. That all makes sense. Now you have J.C. Horn. You got Darisaw here. Micah Parsons. All some, some very, very good options here. For me, right here, I say I can probably get a tackle in the second round because the O-line needs help, right? The O-line definitely needs help. For me right here, 
I know a lot of people will go Darisaw. Some may even go J.C. Horn, which isn't a bad pickup. But the way I see our issues, the way I, I, I say that our biggest needs on the, on the team is O-line. Simple as that. The O-line needs to be addressed. And if you don't address the O-line in the first round, you have to use two picks in a row on O-line, which might work out because we have now we have two uh, second-round picks. You have 39 and 47. You could maybe, maybe you could, you could maybe get Alex Leatherwood and you could get uh, Wyatt Davis. You may actually be able to do that. Now, I'm actually in love with Elijah Vera Tucker. I won't lie to you. I like Elijah Vera Tucker a lot. But but there's a strong chance. I like, I like Elijah Vera Tucker. I like Wyatt Davis. I even like Trey Smith. I even like Trey Smith. Now, you have an option. You could go for Leatherwood. He should be available at 39. And if he's not, then you have Dylan. I think, it, I think in this situation, in this case... There's surprisingly enough options to where you just go ahead and risk it. I never do this. Okay, I never, ever do this in my mock drafts. It's actually kind of surprising to me. But here, I actually go J.C. Horn. And y'all know I've been talking about, I've been harping on the importance of O-line, that I would go O-line first round almost no matter what. And I've always said, I'm not really as big on J.C. Horn as some of y'all are. I usually go with with my guy Sertan if they're both up. But I think there's so many options on the O line that I probably go JC Horn here. And with 39 and 47, I feel decently good about what's going to drop right there. You get a four sure number one cornerback, and you can most likely get two linemen in the second round. I never make this move, but I think it's a smart cho- choice here. I'm not trading out of this spot right here. I immediately go to uh, my linemen, the tackles, Alex Otherwood. And then you have Wyatt Davis and Trey Smith. I even don't, I don't hate Ben Cleveland either. I don't hate Ben Cleveland, but I think here, even though I do like David Mayfield, it's a reach at 39. I think I go with Alex Leatherwood here. You lock up your left tackle and uh, you see what you have. You see what you can do out of uh, Wyatt Davis and Trey Smith. If both fall to 47, you make a decision right there. But I think you go Alex Leatherwood here for sure. And you feel good about your position right now. Ooh, Richie Grant just left too. Ninety six and bro, I got I got this. I got to block Bill Belichick, and this is why you don't deal with Bill Belichick. He will always try to finesse you, even in a Pro Football Network mock draft. He will try to fin- come on now, Bill. Bill, relax, bro. Bill, relax, bro. Whoa, Jalen's here still. But we have our choice between Wyatt Davis and Trey Smith. I think you really can't go wrong with either one. What do we have here with uh, centers? You have Quinn Maynard's, which is a a good pickup too, I think. But I'm going to still go with Wyatt Davis here and double down on O-line. And in the second, you get Alex Leatherwood and you can get Wyatt Davis. I mean, that makes, this is a perfect draft so far. J.C. Horn, Alex Leatherwood, and Wyatt Davis. I won't lie to you. This is the perfect draft so far. I'm actually kind of surprised. I'm actually kind of surprised. Now, round three, we can start looking at other things. Look at the defense a little bit more. We do have Javon Holland here. You do have guys like Tyson Campbell. Don't need Tyson, they don't need a corner anymore. Um, not looking at a linebacker at all. I'm not looking at an edge rusher at all at, at any point. I don't hate Tommy Togiai, big Tommy T right here, uh, but it's the third round. I'd probably look for something a little bit more than a backup for this season. Not looking at a receiver right now. I know everyone wants a receiver. Y'all are weird, bro. Y'all want a tight end too. Y'all are weird, bro. Those aren't where our needs are. I know there's a lot of talk about uh, Walker Little as well. I'm not going to pick another linebacker right here or another lineman right here. What I go with here is Devon Holland. I know I got um, I got J.C. Horn in the first, but J.C. Horn's the number one corner. I don't think that either. I don't think that Dante Jackson can play a, a at the slot. Dante Jackson is not a slot corner. I know we see speed, and you say, well, speed means you're going to get speed receivers in the slot, so that means you can play slot. The biggest problems with Dante Jackson are the worst things that you can uh, 
that you can manipulate. I guess you can uh, call them the best things, the biggest things that you can manipulate and that you can uh, take advantage of as a quarterback. He gets caught looking in the backfield. He gets uh, tricked by play action and zone reads. He gets tricked by where a quarterback's looking and that half second in the slot is just enough time to turn what would be a two yard gain on a catch on a slant to a 15 yard gain. Once you get caught behind your step or two behind the receiver, you can get taken advantage of that's why we've seen Dante playing so much off man because he has less room, I guess more room for error. I think Javon Holland, who can play both free safety and that slot corner spot, would not be a bad pickup here. It's kind of going a little bit heavier on defense than I like. And you do pick up pieces for the secondary, which I think is the weakest uh, position group on this. Well, second weakest behind the O-line, but still a very weak position group overall for the team. I think Javon Holland is the pickup here. Surprisingly, this is, I think, my best draft yet. Javon Holland right here. Y'all may not know much about him, but get to know Javon Holland. He is fast. He is a he's really good in coverage. He's a little bit smaller, so stopping the run may be an issue. But I think when you're playing in the slot, maybe playing some here and there at free safety, maybe you're going to bring Jeremy Chen from free safety to the slot and then throw Holland at free safety some plays. I think you can work out there just fine. Uh, this is a good pickup right here in the third. So you have a corner, you get your slot slash a free safety, and you have two old linemen so far. This is a great, great pickup for us. Now, the Vikings want us to trade down six spots to get 157 as well, and we give up one of our sixths. Now, I wonder if one of our, we got another sixth in the, uh, from our Teddy. Oh, we have it. Okay, we do have it. Or did I get a six from that trade? No, I didn't. They already updated us with our sixth. Good. Well, I don't really care about my sixth anymore then. Wait, can I offer them? Can I offer them 222 instead? The thing is, if they if they propose if I propose this trade and they don't take it, then I won't be able to get this trade again. And I don't care about moving back six spots. Like right here, looking at BPA, I don't really care too much about moving back six spots, mostly because I'm pretty certain the guy I want is going to be here. I'm pretty certain the guy I want is going to be here regardless. So moving down six spots for what? I think they're, I think 157 is more valuable than me trying to finesse them to move down, what, 27 more spots or was it 19 more spots? I'm cool giving up 193, to be honest with you. I accept this trade, and I know my guy's going to be here for me. Boom. And he is. No, he's not here. What? Oh, fuck. All right. All right. I flew too close to the sun, and I got burned. That's going to happen. No. Oh, fuck. Okay, that was a bad. That was a bad trade. That was a bad trade. I mean, I get another fifth. That's not horrible, but like, the whole reason I, oh man, that's, that's tough. That's tough. That's tough because my fourth round pick is always consistently going to be Seth Williams, a six three, uh, receiver out of out of uh, Auburn. Look, he's not like the fastest. He's like a, not a burner at six three. He plays the one speed, and he does have problems getting off of uh, getting jammed at the line of scrimmage. But the thing is, he's a big body receiver. He's a guy that we, I mean, he has a, a, a role on a team that we have not filled. We have a lot of receivers on the team who do very similar things, but they don't have that big body archetype. The guy who can box out corners on a quick slant on the goal line, or even go for those front of the end zone, back corner of the end zone fades, where it's a timing route. You snap the ball, wait a second, throw it up there, and you know that Seth Williams will come down with it because he is a very sure-handed receiver. That was a mistake. Uh, trading down there when you know you want a guy right there is a mistake. I, I think, I, I, I think, oh, that's tough, bro. Oh, that's tough. I don't value wide receiver very heavily in this draft. I think it's a little bit, you're getting a little bit too desperate if you're like, oh no, we lost Curtis Samuel and then what about this and that? Well, we did exercise DJ's fifth year option, so we're good on that for right now. Robbie Anderson has some some issues up in the air right now, but those are issues we could definitely fix uh, next year 
or in free agency. And even later on in this draft, a guy like Seth Williams is valuable. But whatever. I'm going to go with uh, Jalen Twyman here because Jalen Twyman is a very, very strong pass rush uh, defensive lineman on the interior of the D-line. And I know we just got Daquan Jones, but Daquan Jones is a run stuffer. That's really all he does. He's a two-down defensive tackle, which means he plays two downs. You bring in uh, you bring in Jalen Twyman, and now he's in there who can actually pass rush and get pressure from the interior, which only helps out uh, Derrick Brown even more. You have two legitimate threats, and you know what's going on the edge, right? On the edge of the line, you know exactly what time it is. So I think Jalen Twyman is a perfect role player. Here in the fourth round, I would have wanted Seth Williams. I'm like locked in on Seth Williams for show for show, but... I think you were you, you did do pretty good here to get to get an interior D lineman who's a specialist at pass rushing. That's just really tough that I wasn't able to get Seth Williams. I'm gonna stop speaking on it. I'm gonna stop speaking on it. So right now you can look at BPA. At this point, bro, I'm a little bit upset, and 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 it might and it, it might sound like I'm a lot upset. And you could say that you could say I'm a lot upset. You could say I'm a little bit more upset than I should be. But it is what it is, bro. I mean, it, it really is what it is at this point. I'm, 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 I'm actually kind of mad. I won't lie to you. But uh, right here, I mean, I wouldn't even hate going for Shai Smith out of South Carolina. I mean, you may as well. I mean, I, I guess at this point, you can just go ahead and uh, and and pick up Shai Smith. Now he is small, right? He is he is real small, right? Quentin Morris here. Quentin Morris could definitely be an all right. He he, he could be. A, he, he won't be. A, he won't be a horrible. He wouldn't. He really wouldn't be a, a a horrible pickup here, and he can block a bit. Oh man, I'm just mad about. I'm mad about Seth Williams. I consistently get Seth Williams, and I just and I and I mess it up there. Well, here since we don't have a, we couldn't get a receiver. You may as well just go ahead and get a tight end. I guess I wouldn't be mad at getting uh, Quentin Morris here. Uh, oh man. Oh, man. Let's get Quentin right here and, and call it a day. Quentin Morris or, or Eubanks, I'm not mad at either one of those picks. And then, 157, you could just go for another tackle. I think getting an old lineman here wouldn't be all that bad. Um, I have pick number 191 is my next one, which means Trey Hill might be gone. So, do I want another tackle? Or do I want to to get someone that I think will... I, I think I go for tackles. I think I just go and get Tommy Doyle. I think I get Tommy Doyle here and uh, feel pretty good about it. Although, I do like uh, Dan Moore much, much, much later in the draft. Do I need to get Tommy Doyle here? There's not a whole lot else that I feel like we desperately are in need of. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I'm not going to sit here and at 191 hope that Derek Barnes falls to me. Look, I like uh, I like Amen and I like Gary Wallow, but I really do believe, I really do believe that uh, that Derek Barnes is a sleeper in this in this draft. I don't think he's a, I don't think he's a late, late, late fifth. I think he could definitely even go in the fourth on some people's boards, but I think that uh, actually Derek Barnes is the pickup right here. He's ranked 188 on this board, but he is so much better than that, bro. I think he is a he's a sleeper in this draft. That boy shells lost his mind. Now he thought he was clicking the button to draft Derek Barnes in the fifth round of the draft. Little did he know he clicked the button to draft Justin Hilliard. He wouldn't find out his mistake for far too long. All I know is, whatever he's smoking, keep it six feet away from me. Go a little heavier on defense than I may have wanted at first, but I'm gonna round this draft out with old lineman For sure. BPA. Yeah, don't care about any of that. Trey Brown's a decent pickup at corner, but we had that locked up right now. I'm going to O-line. Simple as that. I like Dan Moore here. I can probably get him a little bit later. Yeah, I can get Dan Moore a little bit later. Did I not get another third? Another six, I mean? I didn't. It was my sixth. Guess I didn't get it. All right, whatever. Um... Yeah, I probably just look at at Dan Moore here. Let's see about corners and safeties. No, I'm not seeing anything here. 
BPA one more time. I don't hate Trey Brown. He also does bring some value in uh, re in the return game, but I'm not going to get Trey Brown here. Wait, who did Trey Hill go to? Kylan Hill. Trey Hill went to the Green Bay. Okay. Yeah, I don't hate. Wait. Who did I pick? Wait, who did I pick? I picked. Wait. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got us in Hilliard. I didn't mean to. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. When I do my, when I put the screenshot up, remember that I, I meant to click, I just was, <laughs> shit. I meant to, <laughs> I hit Justin Hilliard, but no, 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 I meant to pick Barnes. Y'all know I'm going to pick Barnes. Where'd he go? I, I, I just saw his name. I just saw his name. I meant to click on Barnes. I meant to go Derek Barnes. Y'all know I meant to click on Derek Barnes here. Uh, so yeah, I, the, the, the pick at 157, damn bro. Yeah, that's on me. I'm gonna go Dan Moore here. Get a tackle who's a little bit uh a little bit versatile, play both sides, and uh make a move like that. He may not be there at 222, so I pick him up. And then right here, you'll BPA. Don't care who, honestly. Actually, I do care who. Actually, I do care who. Maybe you could just go for another lineman right here. I wouldn't hate another lineman. Safeties, I think we're straight. Oh, wait, Jack Anderson. Wait, Jack Anderson is a good pickup, too. He's also versatile. Yeah, Jack Anderson is also versatile. I think he can play. I think he also plays center. Am I, am I right? Yeah, he can play center as well. Yeah, there it is. So, yeah, uh, Jack Anderson is another pickup who's versatile. I think near the back end of the draft, you have to understand that we've had problems with our O-line being injured and whatnot. So, you're going to have to have guys who can play one position one week and maybe have to go somewhere else once that guy gets gets um, healthy and then the next guy gets hurt. I think having versatility on your O-line, especially at the bottom of the sixth round, you feel really good about that. I think going for a guy like... Uh, uh, a guy like Jack Anderson would be a good pickup here. You end your draft on uh, on versatility on the O-line, and I think you have a pretty solid draft here. Hold up, where's he at? Jack, hold up, let me make sure. I, let me just highlight this all the way through. All right, cool. Y'all know I'll be tripping sometimes, right? I do be tripping sometimes, right? All right, here's the final draft right here, and we can go ahead and go to the big screen right here and look at the picks. Number one, we have J.C. Horn. You got Alex Leatherwood and Wyatt Davis fixed up the O-line and the corner position. You now have your one and two cornerbacks. You have J.C. Horn and then A.J. Bouye and Dante Jackson got to fight it out to see who's the one and two. I don't think really either one of those dudes really wants to or really can play in the slot. So we got Javon Holland in the fourth, uh, in the third actually, to go ahead and uh, – he can play some free safety. He can be in that slot spot. And I have all parts of the defense locked up. Every single spot has a starter right there. And you feel real good about it. You can even go ahead and you can do whatever you want to, honestly, on the on the defense and feel really good about it. Uh, Dylan Twyman is a pass rushing uh, specialist on the D-line, on the interior. I think that's a pretty good pickup there in the fourth. I really wanted to get Seth Williams. That would have been the best pickup for us. But, hey, you can't... Uh, yeah. It is what it is. I traded down, and I, I lost on that trade down. And that's going to happen sometimes. Uh, Quentin Morris, tight end. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it, honestly. I didn't want to get a receiver right there. Got a tight end who can also block, so that's going to help us out a lot, a lot as well. Uh, then you have Justin Hilliard. Dan Moore and Jack Anderson to round out the draft here. Two old linemen who are, who are pretty versatile. Not the best in the world, obviously, but... You need versatility when you play for this Carolina Panthers uh, offensive line because dudes be getting hurt. And you know we'd be missing on O-linemen sometimes, so we might be able to go ahead and go pretty heavy on O-line. You pick up four here. Pick up two players in the secondary, a DT, a linebacker, and a tight end. You play this draft pretty balanced. You come out with, what is this, eight picks? It's not too bad. Not too bad, though. Not too bad at all, but... That is my draft. Can I make it so you get all the picks in here at once? I can. But this is all my picks on one screen right now. You see it right here in front of you. What do y'all think of this draft? Was it a W draft? Was it an L draft? What would you have changed at what spots? And let me know what y'all think. Y'all seven round mock drafts. Let me know all of y'all's opinions in the comments below. And you already know what to do with that like button. 
Cheers to you, appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win. 